Hello, and welcome to the Joyful Bookshelf, where books are fun. Subscribe for new books read aloud every week. At Grandpa's Sugar Bush by Margaret Carney and Janet Wilson During spring school break, I go to my grandpa's farm. He's working in the sugar bush and needs my help. Warm weather in February made a hard crust on the deep snow. We haul sap buckets and spiles to the sugar bush on sleds. In the fresh snow that fell overnight, we see fox tracks and weasel tracks. Red squirrels scold us from the spruce trees on our way into the bush. A flock of evening grosbeaks flies over. Grandpa says the funny yank yank we hear is made by the white-breasted nuthatches getting ready to nest in a crack in a big old maple tree. We find the holes the pileated woodpeckers are making, and we often hear them drumming. Many of the sugar maples are more than a hundred years old. Grandpa knows every tree in the bush, just as his dad did. Someday, I will too. Grandpa drills a hole in the first maple tree on the southeast side. The bright spring sun warms that side first. I clean out the wood shavings with a twig. We put in a spile and tap it gently with a hammer. It seems to take forever, but finally a big drop of sap forms at the tip of the spile. I catch it on my tongue and taste its sweetness. We hang a sap bucket from the spile and cover it with a lid. For a while, we can hear the plink, plink of sap dripping onto the bottom of the bucket. Grandpa says the first robin always sings on the day the sap starts to run. After lunch, the sun grows warm and the snow becomes soft. Grandpa's feet leave deep holes in the snow. Mine leave little holes. Snow fleas gather in our footprints. They're another sign of spring, Grandpa says. Every day we collect the sap, carrying it to big barrels near the boiling place. Last October, Grandpa felled dead trees, then cut and split them into firewood. I helped him haul and pile it. Grandpa digs snow out of the boiling place and I bring him the pieces of stovepipe. When everything is ready and the sap barrels are full, we start the fire. First smoke, then heat waves rise up the chimney. Soon, steam from the sap pan will smell sweet and mapley. Whenever we're thirsty, we cool boiling sap in the snow and drink it. It gets sweeter and sweeter and stickier. We keep adding sap to the boiling pan. If it boils dry, the syrup will burn. Grandpa skims off the foam with a large tin spoon full of holes. Every hour, he builds up the fire in the long tunnel under the sap pan. I ask him to let me put the first stick on the bed of glowing red coals. The heat makes my face tingle. Grandpa goes back to the sugar bush after supper, but I go to bed. Working in the bush makes you hungry and very tired. One night, he lets me come along. A big sugar moon lights our path. Finally, the syrup is ready. It drips from the ladle in a sheet. Grandpa carefully draws the sap pan off the fire onto the green poles we propped up on forked sticks. I help him strain the syrup through a cloth to remove bits of dirt and ash. Then we get to clean the pan. We scrape the thick, sticky syrup from the bottom with wooden spoons Grandpa carved out of cedar. It's yummy! We pour the warm syrup into old cream cans. When it's cool, we haul the cans out of the bush on the sled back to the farmhouse. The next morning, we have maple syrup and pancakes for breakfast. Grandma says Grandpa and I make the tastiest syrup in the county. I think it's the best in the whole world. Thank you for watching the Joyful Bookshelf. If you liked today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my new videos.